So I guess we can just kind yeah, of start absolutely. off with some like background information. Where are you from? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I grew up in Douglas. Um, and then after high school, I moved to Laramie to go to college um, and pretty much stuck there for 15 years, I think, 16 years, and taught, started my teaching career in Laramie right after college. Okay, and so how long have you been an educator then? Um, this will be the start of 15, so I've done 14 years. Um, we've been in Casper for five of those. Okay, yeah. so did you go to UW for I your... Did. Yep, I got my bachelor's at um, UW and then completed my special education certificate there as well. Okay, yeah. um, and so why did you decide to go into teaching in the first place? Oh, <laughs> that's always the hardest question, right? Um, I think originally, like, if you would have asked my, the younger self, it was, like, probably to be involved in the community. Um, I was an athlete. I wanted to coach, like, do things like that. Um, but it's totally morphed since then. Like, I, I don't even coach anymore. I, I don't teach social studies, like, was the original intent. Like my career has totally changed from you know twenty year old me to to now. It's I mean it's not even the same thing. Um, so the the original intent was probably was probably that, but you know now it's it's kids and learning, teaching kids how to read, teaching kids how to do math. Um, total totally different um, avenue, I suppose. And so, have you always loved school, like when you were a kid, or? Yeah, I mean. I, Every kid has their moments where it's like, ugh, school. But um, for the most part, I, I, I enjoyed school. I was good at school. And I, I've, had, I've had a couple principals tell me, you know, just throughout you know, your career, it's like pretty much every teacher loved going to school or else you wouldn't have signed up to come back for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. Um, so yeah, the school, school was always great. I had positive experiences with teachers. Uh, you know, I had great friend groups. I've had, you know, I've been very fortunate throughout my life. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite subject growing up? Uh, Physics, probably, like I was kind of a math guy, definitely math more than, um, you know, the language arts. I've grown to love teaching reading, um, probably wasn't my forte, um, you know, being a math guy. Um, but, you know, anything numbers would, would have been for me. And so you've been with Natrona County for five years. Mm -hmm. Have all five of those years been here at Fort Casper? Yep, so uh, we moved here in the July of 18 yeah and you know from the day that you know it, it's kind of funny my, my wife started her business and I got a job here before she even get, opened her business and so it was kind of this in-between thing um, but yeah I was, I was hired here I've, I've you know been in the same role for the five years we've, we've you know done some amazing things as far as you know student achievement um, we've done some amazing things with you know, building processes and, and just doing wonderful things. And I love this job more than more than any job that I've been fortunate enough to have. Um, I've had a lot of great jobs, but this has kind of kind of been home for the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, and so you mentioned earlier that you used to be a social studies teacher and now you're reading. How did that transition? Yes, yeah, so it was kind of, well, I started my career um, working, we call them ESPs in Natrona County, but we call them para professionals mm -hmm. in Laramie. So I did that for I did that for a year and a half, and then I actually taught special education for uh, six and a half, um, doing mostly behavior, um, and then did a couple years of social studies. And when we were moving here, it was kind of one of those situations where it's like, well, I'm just going to apply for everything that I'm mostly qualified for. And then um, I had never taught in an elementary um, before that; it was always in a middle school. And so I did all those years at a middle school and then moving to an elementary, um, you know, eighth graders are shockingly similar to kindergartners, it's kind of funny. Um, that, you know, you just, you, they tell you it, we have to learn how to teach reading. And so, well, let's let's find some courses, let's figure out what all this is. And the, the staff here is fantastic. I mean, they're amazing. I've learned more about teaching reading from just the staff here than, than you know, any course could have taught me. Just, I mean, we have such a strong, language arts program that, I mean, it's it's fantastic. I mean, you, you can't really work in this building and not learn how to teach reading. It's just one of the core, you know, foundational aspects of, of, our, of our building. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you can, can you talk a little bit about what it means to you as both 
the teacher and both and just in general um, what it means to be awarded teacher of the year? Yeah, so I've always, you know, and Miss Rapp was, was the one who nominated me and she was the best principal that I've ever worked for. I mean, she taught me so much, um, a fantastic leader. And just to have her nominate me was such an honor. And then really it comes down to, it, it is fantastic, you know, personally, it's, you know, kind of one of the a culmination of, you know, a lot of hard work and, you know, putting a lot into your craft. But really it's, it's and I've told a lot of the teachers here, this is a group thing because I, I wouldn't have ever been able to do what I do without everyone here. And so it's really, you know, we, we've worked hard as a staff, you know, with our, with our staff goals and I've been able to support a lot of those goals. I've been involved in a lot of different really great things largely because the staff here is great. And I, I get to be, I get to be, I, I, I lead a few teams, I get to do that, but those teams are only successful because everyone pitches in. And so it looks a lot like an individual award, but it really, in my mind, it's really not. It's our staff award and it's, and it's fantastic because they're all fantastic as well. Can you talk a little bit about the process that you went through before being selected? Yeah, so um, I was nominated and, and there's a, I, I appreciate Natrona County the way they do this um, because you have to fill out, I mean, it's pretty serious essay questions. They're not messing around with these questions. It's like four, <laughs> like for real, like, oh, I've got to like academic language and I'm going to like type, I got to go, it's like being a student again. I feel like I was being a student again answering these questions. And so they ask, you know, questions about philosophy and, and you have to fill all these out, but it's pretty much the same questions that the state requires. So you don't have to go back and, you know, and do it again. So it's really, so, you know, you get nominated, filled out all the questions um, and then submitted it to the committee. And then it was just kind of, kind of waiting. It's like, you know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it the best that I can. I, you know, no half measures. Um, so, you know, and then had people check over them, had people read them, you know, got input, that kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, you, you get a couple emails and, and I was actually at um, a meeting and Ms. Rapp had found out and she called me and I, you know, I'll just, something must be at school, I'll just go back or what I hadn't, didn't even think about it. And she got in the door and she's like, aren't you so excited? And I'm like, or what? <laughs> And she's like, you won. I was like, all right. And so I and went and checked my email and there it was because she was on the, e she was CC'd on the email or whatever. And, and it, it was just kind of a, a cool moment <laughs> between the two of us. So it, just a kind of a great process how it went. Um, so you talked a little bit about a lot of these student achievements that you've been able to witness and be a part of a different, different um, initiatives with the school. Can you talk a little bit more about these? Yeah, so things? we've, we've, um, we were an ex, my, well, they stopped keeping data over the um, COVID years, but the first year we were an excelling school across the state. So we, that was one of kind of our uh, major goals was to be an excelling school. And we've, we've been meeting expectations or exceeding expectations pretty much every year that, we've, that I've been here. Um, and so to, and it's something that we kind of pride ourselves on that it's kind of our, one of our goals is that we want to be an exceeding expectation school every year. And you know sometimes it's hard. I mean, there's different measures and different you know a lot goes into it. But that's kind of one of the one of the top goals that we have as a staff every year, and we've been able to achieve it a couple of times. And it's hard work, and it takes everyone. Um, it takes all the teams. It takes it takes you know all the assessments. It takes all the practice, and then it really comes down to having great kids because um, we can pour all we want into it, and if the kids don't take it serious, you know it. it doesn't really matter and we have a bunch of kids that are awesome and they take it serious and they want to they want to achieve their best um, so when as a staff when you pour into kids and then the kids turn around and perform it, it makes it so much more rewarding mm -hmm. um, and can you talk a little bit about how Natrona County is maybe different because you, you said this is the best role that you've yeah. been in what makes Natrona County or specifically Fort Casper different from those other roles that yeah you've been and in? I, I love working at a middle school mm -hmm. um, and you know, there were times. Yeah, I love working in the behavior classroom, but it, it wears on you. There's there's no secrets about that. It's hard. I mean, that's a that's a hard that's hard business. Um, you know, the the turnover rate in those positions is you know pretty quick. And I made it like six years, which I think is farther, like way more than average. Um, but you know, that's just that's it's that's a hard living. Um, but here, it's it's every day that I, I've never like woken up in a morning and dreaded coming to work. And that's, 
you know, I've, I've had those moments in, in the past in my career, um, but never, never here. I mean, the staff is so supportive. We have kids that are amazing. Um, I never I had never really thought about it, but I bring my own kid to school here and he's doing amazing. And so it's just um, really a great place. All of the teachers, all of the teams, um, you know, the best way to impact kids I've found, you know, research has found, is having a group of adults that feels like they can make an impact on kids, and we have that here. And so we feel like we can make a difference with kids. We're all pulling in the same direction, and I feel like that's really the major contributor to why we've had success. Do you have any favorite moments uh, from here at Fort Castro that you could share? Um, yeah, uh, I would say we, we kind of planned a surprise the first year we were in exceeding school. Um, we got a blue balloon because you know the state kind of categorizes it like blue is exceeding, green is meeting, on and on. And we got a bunch of balloons and kind of hit them in the staff room, and and then we got the pop cannons that shoot the confetti, and we didn't tell the staff, and I was hiding behind, kind of hiding in the back, just kind of mm, staff meeting, really, and whatever. So we had a couple people hiding around, and you know they did the thing, and we played cool in the gang celebration. And was like, what's going on? We popped the blue cannons, and everyone jumped out of their skin. It was all a big, kind of big happy surprise. That, because it, it was kind of hard because. You know, my first year was the year that we shut down and then they kind of quit keeping data and it was kind of a big goal that, that we wanted to really be exceeding three years in a row. It was kind of the big push and it kind of got shut down just because it really wasn't fair to be testing kids under those conditions anyway. And so the first year coming out of that to be an exceeding school and then to have that celebration was awesome. Mm -hmm. What are your goals moving forward, whether it be for the next year, next five years, what are you looking forward to? Um, I, I tell I you know I tell all my kids that you know, we're never finished products and not even as adults we have to keep getting better. Um, coaching I've, every team I've coached the goal is to keep getting better and I of the kids that I've taught the goal is to always keep getting better and so there's there's always there's always small things that we can do to get better there's always processes that we can smooth out a little bit to keep getting better. Um, and so the, the better we are as a staff, the better the kids are going to be. And so I look forward to, to keep getting better. And that's kind of always been my, you know, reason for doing it. The reason for, for coming, the reason for, you know, putting all the effort in is we've just got to keep getting better. We've got to keep getting better so the kids can get better. And if you had to, how would you describe your method of teaching? Um, I would say the the most important thing that I do, especially with kids that struggle to read and write and, and to do math is um, instill confidence and build a relationship. There's a lot of kids that for whatever reason, you know, feel like they're not a, a, up with their peers and then it's, you know, school's hard and I don't really wanna be here because everything's hard. Um, so trying to instill confidence, trying to give the skills necessary so, you know, I always say it's like, I love having you all, but my goal is for you not to come and see me anymore. Um, so I, I want you to be in class as much as humanly possible, and, and that's what our goal is. And I think, I, 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 and I try to do that as much as possible and, and build relationships, but not just with my kids, but with everyone. I think building positive relationships with kids and, and doing what's right for kids, giving them the skills necessary and then on top, like, you know, and high leverage instructional strategies are great and, and, you know, good positive teaching is great. But most of the kids that I work with, um, they need a person. They need a person that has faith in them so that they can have faith in themselves. Okay. And if you had to give some advice to a, a new teacher, maybe in their first or second year, what would you say to them? Hang on. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. I know it feels like you're like your hair is on fire, but it'll be fine. Um, but really it's, it's I, I would say, take in everything that you can, build relationships with kids. If, if you're gonna make a positive impact on kids, you know, everything else will come. Be there for the kids, put the kids first, um, and, and you'll be fine. You'll get, you'll get 15 years down the road and, and you'll look back and see who you were and it's like, I'm not even close to the same teacher I was. Um, but most of all, it's like, 
I know some new teachers get a little scared and you know this initiative that initiative what are we going to do the it always swings the pendulum always swings it's this and then it's that and it'll be fine um yeah i think just build relationships with kids and have a positive impact